what you want, when you want it, where you want it. This is The Mesh. I'm with the band. Music and interviews you're going to like. Hello and welcome to I'm with the band here on the Mesh Podcast Network. I am your host, Andrew Moose. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, it invites musicians and bands of all types to discuss their current projects, touring life, and their lives as musicians. Uh, this episode of I'm With The Band is produced in partnership with the No Contact Concert Series, Codex Sound, and Midwood Entertainment. More about all that later. If it, if you guys are considering advertising on The Mesh, on this show, or other shows, it's a super low-cost option to reach a targeted audience. And personally, I've heard the only people who listen to podcasts have a ton of money and all they want to do is spend it with your business. So please go to www.themesh.tv backslash advertise and you can find out all the information. So today on today's podcast, we have someone who is a guitar player, a singer, a songwriter for this band that is going to have a brand new album out this weekend, May 20. I believe it's the third right Silas that is correct. from the Get Right Band. How's it going? Yeah, it's going good, man. Thanks for having hey. me. Doing great. Thanks for thanks for coming on. We're excited, uh, man. I got to listen to a little bit of that album. It really does sound fantastic, and it sounds like you guys have put a lot of work into it. Yeah. So the album's called Itchy Soul. Um, like you said, it's coming out May twenty third. Um, we recorded. We we this is our fifth album. We have um, three full length CDs. Uh, well, two full studio CDs, an EP studio album, and then a. Uh, uh, live album was the last one we put out so this will be our fifth our fifth record um and we wanted to do some really different things on this one so one of the big things we did differently um is that we didn't record it primarily in a studio so we we went into echo mountain uh here in Asheville, where the band lives um and recorded all the drums for the entire record at echo mountain studio and then we took the project home and did everything else at home, layered on bass, guitars, uh, synthesizers, other keyboards, percussion, vocals, harmony vocals, all that stuff um, was just done at home. And we've never done that before. We mixed it ourselves uh, with with help from, uh, you know, consulting with various um, experts, but uh, mostly handling a lot of it ourselves for the first time, which was a really interesting and, and cool experience with with certainly a learning curve but a lot of really cool benefits along the way oh i bet it definitely was a learning curve especially trying to do it all yourself and overdubbing all the tracks yourself that's uh that's a daunting task for a studio engineer much less you know doing it doing it all at home so that's a uh, big kudos for you guys for for taking that on and and being able to produce a really good project at the end that's that's awesome to see. You know, I, I know a lot of folks are going to more of the remote route with this pandemic that we're living through and all that. Yeah. How, how, have, how have you and your, your guys uh, got together to rehearse? To uh, Are you guys doing more? Um, are you just, just kind of taking a break right now? What's, what's going on with the Get Right Band? We're really we're taking a break from everything that involves us all being in the same place. Um, right. But we have... Uh, we have done some live streaming where we can be like in a yard really spread out from each other. And um, we've been working on a number of like video projects. We wrote a, a social distancing song just as kind of a, a funny PSA and each, you know, shot video from our respective houses and edited that all together to, you know, look like it was a live thing. Um, and so we, we've been working on various video projects like that, but this whole pandemic hits at an interesting time in in our cycle because you know you you generally finish a record well before you put it out because you're you, you're leaving yourself time for publicity and promotion and mailing it to radio stations and all that stuff so we have a lot of uh, material that we're just kind of sitting on right now um, so we were able to put out a music video during this time um, for the first single from the record which is called wired and then we put out two more singles since then a new music video that we made during uh, quarantine. And then of course, like we already said, the whole album's coming out. So it, it kind of came out a, at a good time for us. And in, in so far as, you know, insofar as a pandemic can come at a good time um, where we, you know, we had a lot of material 
to, to share already, which is, which has been great. And it, you know, it, it's, it's such a weird thing to not be playing shows because we always talk about connection. You know, that's really what, that's really what art and, and music and playing in a band is about, you know, connecting with each other in the band, but especially connecting with our fans. And it's really weird to not be able to go get that connection. So it's nice to have this material to put out and at least get some form of that connection, even if it's only through, you know, social media and email and stuff. Right. You know, I, I've talked to a lot of musicians over the years about different, you know, their process and, you know, what they what matters most to them in their craft. And the majority of them say it's, it's interacting. It's playing in front of people. It's, it's not the studio work. It's, it's the out about playing in front of people, having people respond back to what they're doing and responding, you know, with one another on stage. And, you know, the folks that don't necessarily get to have that experience, it is, it's one of a kind for, mm -hmm. for musicians. And it's, it's something that, uh, that I, I miss that. And I'm oh, sure right. you guys miss it. Got to miss that more than anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just tell me a little bit about how the name itchy soul, the name of the new album came about. Cause I've definitely got one of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, how, how did that name come up? Well, so the, it, it started with a song. Um, the, the title track of the record. I, I honestly, I couldn't say where I came up with the phrase initially, just wherever, you know, song ideas come up, come, come from. Um, and I wrote that song a while ago and it was kind of, um, it felt at the time really different from anything else we've done before. It was a little more, uh, punky and a little more, um, like poppy at the same time and just kind of a different production approach that I saw going with it. And I, I remember recording just kind of a rough demo version at my house and sending it to my bandmates, Jesse and JC and saying, would you guys even be interested in doing something in this direction? Is this, is this too far out of left field or, or does this feel good? And they were both really enthusiastic about it. And it's, it's funny to think about that as a couple years ago, because now in the time that's passed, I feel like that's almost the epitome of where our sound is at now. Like it's not, it's not out of left field at all for where our sound has, has developed, but partially because we like the phrase and, and a lot of people have said exactly what you said, that that's, you know, e even though you don't know exactly what it means, you know, you've got it or, you know, yeah, you right. connect with it. Um, so we, you know, and because that song musically kind of uh, really exemplifies where we feel like we're at as a band right now. So that's, you know, that's how it ended up as the, is the album title. Awesome. So uh, we're going to go ahead and listen to that title track, Itchy Soul, right here on The Mesh.
So Silas, tell us a, a little bit about the festival scene. Um, I, I know you guys are are kind of in the psychedelic indie jam festival circuit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So tell me, I, I know, granted, a lot of them have been put on the shelf or even punted to 21. Yes. But, um, you know, and that's unfortunate. We all hate that because yes. festivals are, you know, why we do this, I think, you know, it's it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, what, what festivals did you guys uh, are on the bill for coming up? And, you know, what are some of the other festivals that you might have played in the past that uh, that you guys have enjoyed being? part of yeah well there there have been a few um that we were really looking forward to that have already been canceled um flow jam which is a, a yoga and music festival um up in uh northern virginia well not canceled but postponed um unfortunately postponed to a date that we can't do um and uh, a cool festival that oscar blues was putting on um but uh still coming up and hopefully hopefully happening um are uh bristol rhythm and roots which will be our first time playing that though i've I've been as a fan and it's obviously just a, a very cool um festival there in, in bristol tennessee slash bristol virginia right. um and uh let's see what else have we done um We've done Floyd yeah, Fest a couple times, which is great. Yeah, I saw the yeah I saw the Floyd Fest that was also postponed to 2020, and you know that's the one I, I was wanting to talk to you about. You know, Floyd Fest is, you know, it is one of the premier festivals in the Southeast. Definitely. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't had the the pleasure to attend, and I was just wondering what the what is the vibe of that festival? I've I've only talked to a handful of people that's ever been to that festival, so um, I'd like to get some kind of like some insider input on that. Yeah, I think one of the cool things about it is is its size, um, because it's it's big enough to get some really major acts. Like when we were playing there, we saw um, Lauren Hill, we saw uh, Michael Franti and Spearhead, um, Ziggy Marley. So you know a, a number of of cool, really big acts, but it's small enough that it doesn't it's not that experience of going to like Bonnaroo or something where it's almost just overwhelming with the, the density and of yeah. people. Um, and I think it seems like they've cultivated over the years, just a, a really nice um, like group of people there. There people are really there for music lovers. I mean, I, I do feel like sometimes I, I go to certain um, festivals where maybe the the party or the scene or the drugs seem to be the the primary draw um which you know w- whatever to each their own but it, one thing i really enjoy about floyd fest is while obviously it is a party and a scene um it does feel like a lot of people are really th- primarily there for the music and and you know that's that's just a cool energy to be in oh for sure and you know when you have that uh those folks radiating that energy back to you. That's, that's what makes it, you know, that's what makes those festivals so special. And I think you, you nailed it. And, and I, I think festivals that I, of, you know, the size of Bonnaroo or Lockin or something like that. Um, I, I'm not necessarily convinced that they're going to go back to that full scale event after this. Yeah. I know. Um, you know, like a hundred, you know, a hundred thousand people out in a field in, in Tennessee. I, I just don't, I, I don't see that happen. Yeah. I mean, before before this virus, I had a friend who described Bonnaroo as a fight for survival, and I, I, I it, it is it's a pretty intense experience. I mean, I've been and obviously I saw a lot of amazing music, and there's there's a lot of fun to be had. But between the crowds and the heat and the time of year and the dehydration and yeah, it, it's it's intense. That hydrate or die really comes in in the first week of June out there in Manchester. Yeah, I remember. Tennessee. I remember standing at the main stage watching Primus play. Um, I don't, I can't remember what year this was quite a while ago. And um, it was amazing. They're putting on an amazing show, but it was, it was night, you know, maybe 10 PM or something. And I just, people were literally dropping like flies. Like I literally just saw people passing out, getting carried out, you know, on a regular basis, just because they'd been probably, you know, drinking since 10 AM and not getting enough water yeah. and the heat. And yeah, it's, it's intense. Yeah, for sure. And you know how those folks are. If they're close to the rail, they're not going to give that right. spot up and they're not going to waste time exactly. to get some water <laughs> or something like that. So, but yeah, you know, and I've really come to start to enjoy the smaller festival scene. You know, the, 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 the festivals that are under a couple thousand people, I think is really the, the, the I was sort of looking for it. I guess it's the sweet spot. Um, and it, 
any anything more than that just seems like it's just such an ordeal and you have to worry about so much other things than you know just you know having a good time and camping with your buddies for yeah a well one one of um, our favorite festivals that we've played is actually a, a different festival in floyd called floyd yoga jam and i don't know the exact numbers on that but it's it's probably a few thousand um and it's just it's just the perfect size. Like it's, it's so mellow and on a really beautiful piece of flat land with a little Creek running through it. And, you know, it just really, uh, it's kind of the epitome of what you're talking about. Just really cultivates the right, the right kind of like-minded people and music focused people and health focused people. And it's just a really cool, cool scene. And we're, we're going to be playing that again this summer, you know, coronavirus. Yeah, not to mention having like a, a water source running through the middle of a festival venue. That's so much. I mean, that's totally. that's game changer yeah. right there, especially in the middle mm-hmm. of the summer. So, hey, we're going to listen to another one right here. Um, Silas, I want to let you pick one off the album, buddy. What do you want? What do you want to let a, a listener listen to? Um, let's listen to the last track on the album. This is called "Can't Stand," and uh, in, in some ways, I think it, it's one of the um, most sonically different. Um, you know, songs on the record, but it's, it's probably my favorite at the moment. It's the, it's the one I'm most excited about.
So, Silas, we were talking a little bit about uh, the music videos that are on your website, and yeah. uh, and we were talking offline. And you're the you're a, a main contributor in, in a few of those. Tell us about the importance of you know you guys doing these music videos that you're putting out. Yeah, I mean we 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 love music videos. It's something that all three of us in the band get really excited about, and we all um, we, we just like kind of shooting the ideas back and forth and, and all the possibilities of, of storytelling and just cool visuals. And, um, it's just such a cool way to enhance the experience of a song. And obviously it's a huge medium right now with, with the way that everyone's looking at screens all the time. So it's, it's a great time to be making videos, but, but really it's just a big part of our, our, um, our fun and our, our artistic expression. But I, I got into, doing some of that filmmaking stuff myself, uh, maybe four or so years ago. Um, we, we had, I, I had directed and edited a music video for us. Uh, the song is called motivation. And I, it was just something I felt like, you know, I wanted to learn how to do. Um, we hired a great, um, cinematographer from Asheville named Andrew Anderson, and he, he filmed it. And I really just dove in and edited it without knowing what I was doing at all. Um, but I loved it. And after that, I was kind of inspired to, to buy a camera and a couple of friends had asked me to maybe, um, direct some stuff for them. So I just been getting into it over the last several years. And then I've, I've done a number of things with the band where, um, I partially edited it or partially shot it. Like, uh, we did a cover of I'm afraid of Americans by David Bowie that we put out on, uh, Trump's inauguration and then, you know, various music videos along the way that I've been kind of partially um, involved with. But this this one that we put out a couple months ago, the first single from our new album, um, the single is called Wired. That's the first one for the Get Right Band that I I fully, you know, filmed the whole thing, edited the whole thing, directed it. Um, and Jesse and JC were obviously involved in, in conceptualizing it and um, producing it, making it happen. Uh but yeah, it was a really cool experience, and I got to actually the main actor actress in the video is my niece, my my fourteen or fifteen year old. I guess she was fourteen at that time, but fifteen now year old niece. Um, and so it was really fun to work with her, and and really just happy with how the the video came out. And people have been it's it's been getting really good good response, and yeah, a lot of a lot of cool feedback on that. Oh, for sure, man. And we'll actually, uh, we'll embed that video uh, at, on the West.TV underneath this podcast so people can go cool. and, and take a look at that as well. So, awesome. Um, Silas, thanks again for coming to uh, our podcast and coming on our podcast today. My um, pleasure. We really appreciate it. Where where can folks find the Get Right Band online? Yeah, well, so we're, we're just thegetrightband.com. Um, for our website and there's links up there where you can you can pre-order or buy um, the new record but then of course you can also find us um, pretty much everywhere on the internet we're on spotify itunes instagram facebook uh, god knows what else but um, we're, we're around we're easy to find Gotcha. So it, it, this has been Silas DeRocher from the Get Right Band here on The Mesh. We appreciate him and the No Contact Concert Series and Codex Sound and Midwood Entertainment for making all this possible. And of course, head over to TheMesh.TV to check out all of our other shows on our network. Again, my name is Andrew Moose. This has been I'm With The Band here on The Mesh. You won that what your role is, is because what your future is, is it? From my point of view, no label, no slogan, no party, and no skin color, and indeed no religion, is more important than the human being.
You've been listening to The Mesh, an online media network of shows and programs ranging from business to arts, sports to entertainment, music to community. All programs are available on the website as well as through iTunes and YouTube. Check us out online at themesh.tv. Discover other network shows and give us feedback on what you just heard.